Hi everyone and welcome back to The Nest. Sorry it's been two weeks since my last video, but we've been busy with a bunch of things. My son has moved from one city to another city to start his post third year engineering work term and we had to take a weekend to help him move. Um, as well, I've been working hard on completing a couple of engineering slash uh, fabrication pros projects. Uh, the first being uh, our new weld jig table. Uh, we've completed our first engine mount uh, using that system and it took a lot of fabrication and, and, and whatnot to get that all up and running but uh, it was quite successful. And second, uh, we've been performing our final tests on our uh, lightweight tail spring chassis uh, for the uh, for the light version of our tail wheel. Uh, we're going to be working uh, starting now that that's successfully tested uh, with a, a new heavier duty version, probably a dual spring unit that uh, will handle and interface with the Matco tail wheel for heavier aircraft up into the 1300 pound range. We are pleased to have completed and shipped a Dakota Hawk fuselage and hardware kit for Jack Emmons. They're on their way to Hawaii right now. We want to welcome Randy Estrella as well to the nest. He has just purchased a quick build Super Koala kit. I want to give a quick crate update. Uh, the price of wood uh, with all that's been going on with the real estate market and whatnot and houses being built has tripled as of late and that has pushed our crate prices well up around $900. We've decided to bring the crate manufacturing back in house to try to keep the costs low for our customers. I'll be back after the intro with engine mount discussion, uh, spring gear suspension tail wheel testing video, the latest in Cozy Carb. We'll finish with another installment of Algie Yates and his youngster build. This is Fisher Flying Products. I'm Dave Hertner. Welcome to The Nest. Our video newsletters provide weekly insight into building and flying our 15 wooden aircraft designs. Polini Motori of Italy is a gracious sponsor of our channel. Polini is the manufacturer of the Thor 250DS. Cozy Carb Ice Prevention Systems is a proud sponsor of this channel as well. Please take the time to watch our videos to the end as this assists us in the metrics that YouTube uses to rate our channel. Hit the like button if you feel that the content is worthy. We invite you to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button and hitting the bell so that you are notified whenever we post our newsletters. A while back I decided that uh, to make engine mounts in a repeatable fashion we had to come up with some sort of uh, table to do the welding on and, and that table had to have a support system that would allow us to uh, hold all of the components for the engine mount securely in place while it all gets welded together and then to be able to take the support components put them on a shelf and then the next time we need to weld that engine mount we just grab them off the shelf and we put them in so we'd have a receiver on the table that holds the um, you know the part specific jigging in place uh, in a repeatable fashion and and uh, then what we would do is so basically the the engine mount or uh, the engine mount table is in essence the uh, the firewall of the of the system and the jig becomes the engine portion of what the engine mount attaches to and so uh, we this past week uh, finally got all the pieces put together we had an engine mount that we've been uh, you know contracted to make uh, for a youngster to Werner uh, 5V so five cylinder Werner radial engine to uh, a youngster and um, so we drilled out the holes in the table to match the youngster uh, mount points and then we created the in this case two separate pieces um, one mounts to the engine and then there's an interface that has uh, the rubber mounts uh, between it and the portion that mounts to the firewall and um, So this was the first time this all kind of came together. We have 
the uh, engine mount designed in CAD, then we have um, we send that out and we have all the components CNC cut at a CNC tubing cut cutting manufacturer. And uh, we made a couple of the components in house and um, they all kind of went together and they all <laughs> surprisingly fit together. And then we welded it and tacked it and welded it together um, uh, to be a finished engine mount. So uh, this took a, a bunch of time to kind of figure out and think, uh, think through and, and fabricate and whatnot. But we're pleased to say that uh, we've got our first engine mount produced off of this, uh, off this table. So um, as you can see from the photos that I've had uh, showing uh, while I've been talking about this, uh, it's, uh, it's a very interesting way to, to manufacture the, uh, the engine mounts and it and provides a very repeatable way um, that, we can, that we can make sort of one-offs. You know, uh, we, don't have, we don't make a big production run of these engine mounts and so uh, to be able to bring the jig back in and then reproduce one uh, exactly the same way as we did one eight months ago or a year ago, uh, then that provides that, that ability for us. And now I'd like to give a coil spring tailwheel chassis testing update. On a previous video, we showed some of this testing and we decided to drill some lightning holes to reduce the weight of the chassis and we changed the, uh, the spring uh, that we're using to a little bit higher capacity str spring. Um, and uh, now our all up weight for our lightning efforts is 4.2 pounds and that's including the tail wheel assembly. Uh, we tested the, uh, the system with uh, 80 pounds uh, in the box and uh, we had uh, 22 inches of height for the drop. And this is a destructive, this simulates a destructive test. We were looking for any bending, we were looking for any damage, uh, and we found none. So we're quite pleased with this test, and uh, we are now going to be working to uh, create a new uh, support arm that will attach to the Matco tailwheel, and we'll likely be going with a dual spring uh, affair for that, and uh, we'll do some more testing in the future. But it uh, looks good for this chassis tailwheel design. And now for a Cozy Carb update. We want to let everyone know that we are now shipping the Cozy Carb for the 912 and 582 Rotax liquid cooled motors. Uh, we've got everything all put together and we've got product on the shelf. So we uh, want to thank you to all the customers who have purchased so far. And if you have any questions about Cozy Carb, feel free to give us a call at the shop. We're also recently been asked to see whether or not we could fit the Cozy Carb to the Polini Thor series engines. And so we'll be talking with Polini to find out what their specifications are on their carburetors so that we can see whether we can fit our units to their engines. So that's good news. Hopefully we can do that. And now we join Algie Yates with his latest installment of his tail kit build for his youngster. Take it away, Algie. Hi, and welcome to the channel. In this video, I finished the rudder off to the point where it could be covered. I changed the profile at the front end of the rudder to one that's more pleasing to me, slightly different from the plan. And so that requires a little bit of extra work. At the back end of the video, I tell you how you could do it without going through all the issues which I go through in this video. I round the edges and get it all ready to go. Remember, this is not an instructional video. This is just how I do things. I try to pass on some hints and tips which you can take or leave. So let's get this rudder finished. The front edge of the fin uh, doesn't naturally lie with the same front section of the rudder. So my initial thoughts were I got it wrong. I got the bow wrong. Uh, you know, it must have allowed it to flex out. So I double checked the bow here against the, uh, the plan. It matched the plan. And by taking my bevel gauge, by uh, putting the bevel gauge against the, uh, the fin there with this uh, lower rib, which is uh, parallel to the top rib, and should be parallel with the uh, with the, the uh, rudder lower rib. Yes, definitely. That is, you know, the angle means that that chops off there. And I used that on the plan. I put that against the plan, and lo and behold, 
it showed the same thing so again another still shows you uh, what that was like so how am I going to uh, rectify that this because this is going back about uh, two laminations so about a quarter inch so I'm going to put a piece of quarter inch wood in here which I'm going to shape uh, but also taper so that it comes up to around about this position here okay so I've made this uh, this repair section it's uh, longer than the taper that's going to be taken off uh, the idea is that this is going to be flexed into here the same way as the lamination uh, is and from measuring the thickness that the lamination is that the current lamination side is uh, with this in position measuring across it's near enough the same thickness and I've got a little block which will just go into there to allow this to key in. So here we are, I've bonded in the uh, strip, you can sort of see it's got a flex in it, and it goes past where the uh, section was which I've drawn that needs to sort of come off, and that way it allows me just to be able to taper or round this area back a little bit to get the curve so it's flowing curve. So the next task I've got is I'm going to be cutting this off here which I'll do with a saw and then uh, sand it so that it's a nice flat area. Okay I've sanded this, uh, cut and sanded this back, two laminates this one and this one matches up with the thickness there. I've checked the measurement going around it's the same so I've maintained a, a parallel line this has been rounded slightly to uh, match so we've got a nice curve, it's going from a straight to a curve, it doesn't have a, a sudden kink in it. I've already sanded this bit down to a taper so I can route back to put my inserted gusset in. Uh, all I did was I just carried the line on from the, uh, the end of the rudder, uh, line, rib line here, uh, and passed that around so I can do that initial chamfer the same way as we did the uh, leading edge of the fins. The uh, problem is now completely solved. Uh, just to clear some bits up uh, to make sure that uh, you don't think that I've just jumped into things without thinking about it. Uh, we've cut back two laminations at the uh, thinnest point added on material here which is the same thickness but it's made up of a single lamination. The uh, slope here uh, the, at the worst it is close to 1 in 12 which is still an acceptable scarf angle. This has been tapered back closer to 1 in 15. So in theory the uh, joint strength here should be the same as original. As a stress engineer I've done the calculations and the loss of material but the regain of material means that we've got less than 1% of differential and looking at the uh, the weight side of it it's come out at approximately the same weight I weighed the, this uh, whole assembly before I uh, started doing the repair section then I sanded it and did all this little lot and weighed it again and uh, and that was before we we cut back here so uh, it was of the order of about three grams difference in weight so negligible one might say. Moving on from this bit I'm now going to go into starting to round the bow or shape the bow so from here to here it's going to be shaped the same way as the fin leading edge using the template from the fin leading edge so look at the video there which should uh, hopefully uh, give you a link to it then there's a second line here and, it, and I've got round written on there uh, from here going all the way around the bow to the point there uh, it will be carried out uh, with uh, the rounding off method I used for the tailplane the, the horizontal stabilizer and elevators so you can see that in the video links there. Going down to the bottom end here I will do a slight round over uh, once I've completed the boxing in so 
that won't be in this video and that will then have to transition into the uh, into the half round uh, that we've got going on here or the near enough half round we've got going on here so there'll be a transition section so the rudder is complete as far as I can go uh, till I get some more hardware so I can do the rudder horn fit the hinges uh, if you've bought the kit and they've got the covering at this stage uh, you could cover if you wanted to uh, go with the sort of standard fitment of the horns I've uh, done all the shaping around the trailing edge and the leading edge so it matches up with the profiles and as you can see uh, I did that modification uh, here to get the lines all uh, all flowing and straight with the fin. I'm really quite happy with the outcome on that. Uh, the way to get around that, if you if you want to follow the same sort of line, far better than doing this sort of inset repair that I end up doing, is you just simply draw the lines on the plan to where it should be and add a block and then do your laminations that would mean you'd have a slight change in the angles on uh, this this bottom rib here uh, and that would be pretty much the only modification you, you the blocks would uh, just naturally fall into position if you cut them to fit so this is uh, the state I'm at now in the next build video because I'm going forward with the uh, the Fisher build uh, I will be uh, going through the uh, fitment of hinges, but we'll have to wait for hardware and bits to arrive for me to do that. So in the meantime, uh, look after yourselves and I'll catch you later. Bye now. Thanks again for watching. We try hard to bring you interesting content each week to help us out. Please like and share our videos if you feel the content is worthy. To receive the latest info from Fisher Flying Products, click the subscribe button and ring the bell. See you next time in the nest.